often when people talk about finding eigenvalues and eigenvectors, they talk about it as diagonalizing matrices. So what is diagonalization all about? And how does it relate to computing eigenvalues and eigenvectors? Let me just quickly go over that so that if someone asks you whether we cover diagonalization in this class, you can say yes. And the reason why you can say yes is because we talked about it, but we called it finding the eigenvalues and eigenvectors of a matrix. Diagonalization has to do with computing a non-singular matrix X such that if you take a square matrix A and you multiply that matrix on the left by X inverse and on the right by X, you get a diagonal matrix so that this matrix here has entries on the diagonal and zeros off the diagonal. And notice that we're using lambda here on purpose and we're using X here on purpose. So that's what diagonalization is all about. Now, it's not the case that one can always find such a matrix X. Let's talk about when we can find such a matrix X. And let's start with a two by two example that we saw earlier. Now for this particular matrix, we found the eigenpair two minus one, one, and the eigenpair three minus one, two. If you take these eigenvectors and you make them into the columns of a matrix, which is something that we've done often, then notice that this matrix times the first column should just be equal to this right here. So we make that the first column on the right here. And this matrix times the second column should be just this right here because we saw this. Okay, notice that multiplying this matrix right here that consists of this column and that column on the right by a diagonal matrix that has these entries on its diagonal, that is the same as this matrix right here. Why? Because multiplying on the right by a diagonal matrix means you scale the columns. So what we get is that this on the left is equal to this on the right. And in particular, we notice that this matrix is the same as that matrix. It's the matrix that has the eigenvectors as its columns. And this diagonal matrix has the eigenvalues as its diagonal elements. Notice that we can multiply this on the left by the inverse of this matrix right here and then you get the identity there. And if you look stare, stare at it hard enough, this is what you get. And notice that what we have done is we have found a matrix X such that X inverse times A times X is a diagonal matrix D or lambda. That was a concrete example. And notice the steps that we went through. We found the eigenpairs. We made our vector X equal to the matrix that the eigenvectors associated with those eigenvalues as its columns. And lo and behold, if we then did X inverse A times X, we got a diagonal matrix that had the eigenvalues on the diagonal. So this shows that there seems to be a relationship between diagonalizing a matrix and finding the eigenvectors and eigenvalues of that matrix. It is not the case that all matrices can be diagonalized. Okay, let me give you some hints. What are the eigenvalues of this matrix? You should be able to just read those off. What is the dimension of A minus lambda I? That tells you something about how many linearly independent eigenvectors you can find. And that tells you something about whether at least you can use the steps for the last example to find a matrix that diagonalizes this matrix. Go and do this homework and see me in the next video.